Hello, I'm Casey Schultz. I work with uh, Professor John Rundle at UC Davis, and we work on Virtual Quake, or I guess you'd say the software formerly known as Virtual California, and I'll explain that in a second. So all right, I'll give a brief overview of our earthquake simulator and um, the inputs and the simulation physics, and then I'll go into how we derive earthquake probabilities from our simulation output, how we compute co-seismic gravity changes from simulated earthquakes, and our future uh, directions for the research, and then I hope you all will download Virtual Quake for your own uses. So Virtual Quake is a, is a boundary element code written in C++, and it's designed to explore seismicity on today's faults. Um, and simulations can be done for any input fault model, and that's the reason why we're changing the name from Virtual California, Virtual Quake. Um, Virtual Quake assumes a geometrically static fault system. We use backslip to load stress by building up a slip deficit. Um, it's also uh, a single layer elastic half space model. Um, we don't include any elastic discontinuities or any viscoelasticity yet. Uh, and so the output from our simulations is a simulated seismic history, earthquakes, uh, co-seismic slips, stress values. And we can use a simulated, uh, the simulation output to generate uh, maps of gravity changes, surface deformations, INSAR interferograms, and earthquake probabilities. So for the simulation data I'm going to show later, we ran a 50,000 year simulation of the uh, full California fault model called USURF2. Um, it's, uh, I guess most notably the San Andreas runs up here down through Southern California. Uh, so we, we mesh the faults into the functional members of our simulation, the three kilometer by three kilometer uh, fault elements, and there's about 14,000 of them in this particular fault model. Um, we took the, the fault parameters directly from the USERF2 deformation model, which derives them from uh, observational data and paleoseismic data. So the basics of our uh, simulation physics, so how, how our earthquakes generated, um, we compute the stress for all of the elements in our, uh, in our model. We, we would derive them from integrating you know, the stress tensor times the slip vector, but we make a few uh, simplifications. We evaluate stress only at the center of each fault element. We apply slip uniformly across each element, and that allows us to simply compute uh, stresses, so the, the shear stress computed along fixed uh, rate vectors, just a sum of the stress, uh, the shear stress Green's function times the slip, and the normal stress is just the sum of normal stress Green's function times the slip. We take these functions from Okada's 1985 uh, paper for deformations in elastic half space. And so uh, Virtual California, the rupture model, or sorry, Virtual Quake, the, uh, the rupture model, how we decide when earthquakes happen, uh, we, d we assign a failure stress to each element. And so once the uh, Coulomb failure function here reaches zero, uh, elements are allowed to slip, and this is called a, a static failure, and the Coulomb failure function is just a, a function of the shear stress, the normal stress that I showed earlier, and the uh, coefficient of static friction, which we derive from fault parameters. Uh, so once, once we find an element that has its Coulomb failure function equal to zero, that element is allowed to slip, and then we check the following relation for all of the other elements on that fault. And if this relationship is satisfied for the values of their Coulomb failure function before and after the initial static, uh, statically failed element slips, if it's bigger than a predefined constant eta, then we allow those additional elements to slip and be involved in the earthquake, even if they're not quite at their critical uh, stress level. It's called our dynamic triggering factor, and this is what we use to control uh, rupture propagation throughout our simulations. And for the simulation data I show here, we take uh, eta to be 0.5. So that's a summary of how the sim simulator works. So why do, we, why do we simulate, and what can we do with the output? A big thing we can do is generate a forecast. So from a 50,000 year simulation with the fault model I showed before. We take uh, only the earthquakes that produce slip on these Northern California faults, most notably the Northern San Andreas running through here. Um, we take only the uh, earthquakes with magnitude 7.5 or larger. And in this simulation, we find 482 of those earthquakes with an average recurrence interval or time between earthquakes of 98 years we use the times between the earthquakes to derive the cumulative conditional probability of having an earthquake at a time t 
given that we have not had an earthquake on these faults in T0 years. And so this is evaluated for different times since the last earthquake. And so you can see how the distribution evolves uh, over time. And so the real, the real forecasting output here, the real prediction is when we invert these probabilities to predict the time to the next earthquake, shown here, as a function of time since the last earthquake for the earthquake shown uh, occurring on these faults. And so um, we've computed the waiting times here for uh, those uh, recurrence intervals that have 50% probability. This is the dark line here. And then the upper and lower bounds are those uh, waiting times with 25% and 75% probability. And so we can say, so a, a forecast from the virtual quake would be that since we have not had a magnitude 7.5 or larger earthquake in Northern California since the 1906 San Francisco earthquake, we take T naught to be 108 years, which puts today as the vertical blue line here. And so the prediction is that we have a 50% chance of a magnitude 7.5 in the next 55 years and a 75% chance in the next 94 years. And so here again is a, uh, our forecast for the Southern, uh, the Southern California group of faults shown here. Uh, this is for magnitude 7.0 or larger earthquakes. And so in our 50,000 years, we find uh, uh, 1,400 or so earthquakes, average recurrence of 22 years. And these are the cumulative conditional probabilities. And here is our forecasting result that since we have not observed a real 7.0 earthquake since 2010, the El Mayor Cucupá earthquake, uh, that puts T naught at four years. So that puts us here at the blue line. And we find a 50% chance of a 7.5 in the next 16 years, 75% chance in the next 30 years. So we've also added the ability to generate uh, some uh, co-seismic gravity changes uh, for our simulated uh, earthquakes. And so here, here's just the basics. We implemented uh, Okubo's Green's functions for gravity changes. Uh, the equation is not too important, just that the expression in the curly brackets is the component due to density changes within the medium. So compression leads to a different amount of mass below the faults, and that can change uh, gravity. And the second term here is due to uh, either subsidence or uplift uh, around the fault, so you get farther away from the Earth or you get closer to it and gravity changes just by a little bit. So here are the sort of three characteristic gravity patterns for uh, strike slip, a vertical strike slip fault. The fault projection is shown in black uh, for normal with uh, a dip of 30 degrees and a thrust fault with a dip of 60 degrees. The color unit here is microgal, which is a very small unit. You take you know, normal surface gravity, 9.8 meters per second. This is uh, one microgal would be a change in the fifth decimal place. So these are pretty small signals. You see these go to negative and positive 50 here for the strike slip, which has a characteristic like butterfly or quadrupole type pattern. Uh, normal uh, faults, which have a characteristic positive, sort of big signal right above the fault, and the thrust, uh, thrust earthquakes, which have a big negative gravity signal above the fault. And so these are the fault parameters, but those are just the how to visualize what kind of earthquake you're looking at by looking at the gravity signal. So from our simulated, uh, from our simulated earthquakes, just, I just handpicked one that sort of resembled the 1906 uh, San Francisco earthquake with the magnitude 7.8, uh, really, really large su surface rupture that goes all the way from the northern part of the San Andreas that's off the coast down towards past San Francisco you can see that this resembles the characteristic pattern for a, uh, for a strike slip fault. It has the four lobes, but it's distorted since it, the San Andreas is in a perfectly straight fault. It's got some curves to it. Um, and so this, is, well, this, this, would, this would be our modeled signal for uh, surface gravity measurements. Here is a solution for a different set of Green's functions that only correspond to the dilatational gravity changes, which are those arising only from the density changes. This signal is closer to what you would see from a gravity observing satellite. Um, and you can see that the signal is uh, much smaller. Uh, the same color bar was used for both. Um, so our future directions, we're working on uh, running high resolution simulations with the most uh, up-to-date model of the California fault system, USERF 3. We're also developing forecasting algorithms using the, the conditional probabilities that, we, uh, that I showed earlier. Um, 
and more, a more ambitious goal for us in the future is to integrate our, uh, our co-seismic slip and deformation output with a tsunami generation code to generate uh, a catalog of possible earthquake and tsunami scenarios. And we're also working on uh, simulating subduction zone faults to maybe identify any observable changes in uh, sea level associated with the earthquake cycle. So the, the whole purpose of virtual quake is for uh, other researchers to be able to, to use their own fault models uh, and create uh, their own simulations. So we've now uh, put uh, virtual quake source code and a user's manual on the co at the computational infrastructure for geodynamics. So go to this link, you can download the most recent release version, look at the, uh, the user's manual and tell you how to build your own fault model, tell you how to run it uh, on a number of systems from a laptop up to a multi-core uh, multi uh, cluster. And as of last week, we've had 170 downloads uh, worldwide. So there's a broad interest in using this. And I hope you all download it. And so that's it. Thanks. So uh, thank you, Casey. And uh, time for one short question. So they they include uh, so the the input is just the fault model, which has the long term slip rates and then the the various. Uh, uh, ge geometrical you know, layout of the faults and so historical data is used to derive the slip rates and it has been used in the past to try to develop the failure stress uh, values for each fault but we're actually working on implementing an analytical way of deriving that just from the, the slip rates. That's, that's an excellent idea, and we're, we're taking steps to, to, to do that, yes, but we're not, quite, we're not quite there yet. Thank you. <laughs>